from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE's coverage, virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020. It's a three weeks we're going on, we're on the ground here in Palo Alto doing the remote CUBE, CUBE virtual, we are virtual CUBE. Uh, here, wall-to-wall -wall coverage over the three weeks. It got a great segment here. Stephen Long, regional CTO for App Dynamics, and Ron Teeter, chief architect with Jobvite. Gentlemen, thank you for joining me on this segment. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming on. The Cube Virtual. Yep. Thanks for having us. Great wish, to be here. Wish we were. Wish we were um, in person. Normally we are, but with the pandemic, it's, it's hard. Um, Stephen, at App Dynamics, I want to ask you. Uh, you got a customer here. We're going to dig into the use cases of the transformation journey, multiple wave transformation, which I'm excited to talk about. Uh, but yes. talk about App Dynamics. What's the big story for you guys at Reinvent? Get that quickly. Get a second to explain. Yeah, sure. App Dynamics is the number one world's leading APM vendor, and we're um, there to be the full stack observability platform. And in that, we're talking today about our Deep Code Insights, uh, really to gain that visibility into production, securely capture data, and uh, really get that context through a dynamic application so that you can find the problem and fix it the right the first time. Great, thanks Thanks for that, thanks for that insight. Ron, I want to get into, you're the chief architect, which means you get the keys to the kingdom at Jobvite. Um, mm -hmm. You got to look over the landscape, you got to have that 20 mile stare out to the future, but you also got to deal with the reality present here, and it's a tough one. When you go back, this is a terrible year, um, a lot of weirdness, a lot of craziness, but everyone's hurting, they, but they're retooling or they have a tailwind behind their back. So they're either accelerating faster or they're retooling. What does transformation mean to you these days? Yeah, so for Jobbyte, you know, we, we had a distributed workforce uh, prior to, you know, the pandemic shutdown. And what it did for us is it actually forced us to go all in on why can't we work remote all the time? Why do we care where we have facilities? Um, and so we've gotten really good at scaling our organization and being productive remote. Now we actually can hire anywhere we want to, right? And that gives us more leverage and, and opportunities to scale our teams going into 21. Awesome, now from a technology standpoint, um, I'm hearing a couple of different stories. There's two extremes is the, you know, uh, I'll say airlines or those kinds of markets where there's not a lot of business happening, but they're retooling. And then you got, you know, obviously video or anything virtual, um, modern applications. It's a surge in business, so you have to move faster. Speed is critical. How do you retool in an environment where you got remote, which is totally productive, get that. But now I got more teams. I got to coordinate, I got to communicate. I got to make decisions, architectural yeah. decisions. They're big yeah. ones and, and cloud certainly is here. You got hybrid, you got the edge, big themes this week. Yeah. How, how do you look at yeah. that? The, the, the way we, we look at it, uh, you know, Jobbyte has the longevity to remember what it was like from 2008 to 2013. Uh, we took that economic recession to build two additional products um, and launch them into the market in 2013 so that we could wave, you know, ride that wave of growth to drive our business objectives. And we're doing the same thing now. Um, you know, hiring is a, a fluid market and this year hiring was way down, right? We saw a 60% drop in uh, open requisitions on our platform alone. Uh, and, and you could see it just dive in March, but it started coming back in August and September. And so at this point, we're now post, um, post pandemic uh, so the, the hiring rates right now are higher than they've been all year. Um, they're very close to where they were last year um, for the same time. And we expect that to continue to climb as businesses continue to you know, evaluate whether or not it's safe to scale. Um, for us, this lull means we've got an opportunity to make changes to our infrastructure that aren't going to be disruptive to our customers but also allow us to get out in front of that so that we can go into 21 with a very strong uh, product focus um, by taking care of some of the technical debt now. Uh, and, and that's exactly what we've been doing is investing in ourselves 
so that we can operate faster with more agility next year. You know, that's worth calling out and, and, and mentioning, it's great insight. It really is, you got to come out of the pandemic with a growth strategy. I hear all the CXOs and CISOs in particular dealing with all the security issues, but I got to have a growth strategy. Steven, this is where I think the cloud speed scale, the operating model of software, networks, compute, you're seeing that now get back into the swing of things. It's always been the holy trinity, if you will, of technology, you know, network compute and storage. Now it's got the cloud and you got an operating model. We're back to kind of a groove swing here. What's your, how does app dynamics and Amazon all fit together into this kind of journey? Yeah, and you know, if, if we really look at app dynamics, we 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 focus on that digital experience. And I think when the, the pandemic hit, we saw ninety five percent of uh, customers that we surveyed in our agents of transformation COVID survey that their priorities shifted, and ninety five percent of those said, you know, within that shift, the 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 digital experience became front and center. And so when you're operating in the cloud and you want to have that full stack observability, not just from the end user and not just from your application perspective, but also from your business perspective. And, you know, in any given business, the application is the North Star of the business. So uh, placing the emphasis on that app dynamics and surfacing what's actually happening and eliminating blind spots during this pandemic where uh, it's more important than ever to have the best digital experience because that's the, that's the, the, the brand loyalty really is that a digital experience. Ron, I want to ask you, you mentioned something earlier, you were talking about how you seize on the opportunity to virtual at home and you retool, but also you mentioned some of the macro conditions of the market. Jobs are down, now they're on the back up on the upswing, but the yeah. geographic hiring is a huge deal. I can almost imagine that's kind of an unforeseen use case where, I mean, it's kind of like working at home. Yeah, X percentage of people will be working at home. We plan for that in our disaster recovery or disruption management, whatever they do. Now 100% people work at home. Now 100% people looking for jobs. You probably have yeah. to rethink the use case because when you have a platform, you got to think, okay, how do I serve my customers who might have a need to recruit from more geographical places? That's a coding thing. So how do you do that stuff? I mean, take us through like the mindset of like what goes on in the, in the in in your world. Yeah. So one of the nice things about uh, building Jobbyte as a hiring platform and a sourcing engine is we use it, right? We we now need to solve the same kinds of problems internally that our customers are facing, right? And so we we control the software. We understand the problem. Um, and so it's just a matter of deciding these are the things that we're going to uh, prioritize next. Um, you know, we saw an, a very active summer of social justice uh, outrage. Um, and a lot of that stems from a lack of diversity and inclusivity in hiring. And we're already responding to that by um, delivering features into the product line to help our customers address that uh, in their places. And, you know, the, the key to this is speed. You know, I think you mentioned it and Steve's talked about it as well, right? The ability to move quickly, safely, is the, yeah. the, the grail that everybody's looking for. Yeah. And, you know, you have to have the right partners to make that successful. So I got to ask you then, what are the main benefits you, you see out of working at AppDynamics? Obviously, you're a good customer there. So we're, we're talking through it. You got a great environment, you're a leader in how to take advantage of these opportunities in code and shift. Right. Um, what's the benefits of AppDynamics in that equation? The key there that we see with AppDynamics Cisco is the scale and the amount of innovation that they can drive through their product line. Uh, you know, you know, one of the things that Steve and I were talking about earlier this year uh, during their Transform event was this deep code insights uh, component, which is really uh, production runtime debugging. So imagine I can knock out my uh, mean time to repair, my zero trust, and my uh, accelerated solutions of early detection in one solution, right? I can take something that would normally take hours, if not days, into minutes to resolve. Uh, the, the impact on an organization of just one simple feature like that is tremendous when people understand you know, what it can do for them. Uh, and, and 
you know, it, it's been invaluable for us. Yeah. Uh, well, you got the speed and the scale with the cloud. So take me through that uh, impact because one of the things that's being discussed heavily here at reInvent and in the industry is the new normal, you know, and the new new realities we're living in post pandemic as well, what's going to come out of it. And that right. is the expectations of the users and is going to drive the new experiences. That's kind of the theme. So the question right. is whether that's developers or end users or consumers or business users, that's huge for applications yep. to know what the user experience may be because if you don't know what they expect, you don't have the right security. <laughs> it kind of all crashes. So what you, I mean, you're nodding your yeah. head, weigh in, please. Yeah, so I heard a comment earlier from uh, one of my peers in the industry that, you know, was basically saying that, you know, uh, nine months ago he had 400 facilities and now he has 18,000. Um, you, know, you know, trying to imagine securing that environment. Um, you know, for, for us, um, the way we think about it is, you know, work is where you're at. Uh, and so we, we solved the access problems and the tooling problems a long time ago for Jobbyte. What we've been doing for our customers is delivering mobile recruiting solutions. So imagine, I don't even need my desktop to complete the hiring process. I can work through the negotiations with a recruiter. I can talk to the candidate. I can text them. Um, uh, one of the big things that we released uh, in early access last month was our new intelligent messaging platform so that recruiters and hiring managers can have a much more rich conversation with candidates on the mobile device where the candidate is, right? And that's how we're trying to bring this, this new reality to the marketplace is say, I can't assume that somebody has a browser and an email client anymore, yeah. right? You know, texting I, I think, don't yeah, I mean, that's a huge point. I mean, it's, you know, the joke, Stephen, is, you know, uh, it's just distributed computing again, because there's really no cloud. There's no, it's, if you think about the edge, it's everything is the operating environment. Edge is the data center, edge is the cloud, edge is someone else's place. So if you're thinking about what Ron just said, 18,000 facilities to homes or wherever, everything has to be looked, that's distributed computing. We've been there before, yeah. right? I mean. <laughs> Yeah, and I think when when Ron, the way Ron I think describes it is, is highly accurate in his company, obviously, but in many companies where, you know, if you've got those eighteen thousand endpoints and distributed computing, um, you need to be able to gain visibility into production, and production could be, a, you know, a piece of code living anywhere, and if you can gain that and do that in a secure way, which what we do with App Dynamics with our our deep code insights then you can look at data on demand and you can begin to understand the context of what's happening for that end user experience. And you can line up a watch point to watch the code that's executing. And then if it's not working, you can actually see how it's not working, recreate that and actually fix it right the first time because you can actually see the code in production in the cloud in this distributed environment and, and really be it's more powerful way to operate to reduce time when something happens that you need to fix. You know, uh, one of the, I was talking to a friend yesterday about this, we weren't on camera, I wish the cameras were rolling, but I'd love to get you guys reaction to this because we were saying, I remember I broke into the business as a, C, a young CS major in the 80s, late 80s. You know, we had to install everything by hand, the software. You mm -hmm. install stuff on a server or, you know, had stuff on a machine and then you put it on a, on a server, you put it in a data center, all those things, right? The young kids then come in and saying, okay, I'll just use the cloud. The next generation, and they never installed anything. They don't even know what, a, what an installation pack is. Now the next <laughs> generation's not going to have versions. So you start to get into this notion of evolution with software, because if it's software operated, you don't know what version you're running. It shouldn't be disruptive. And the point is, this is where I think you guys are getting to here is the holy grail is there's no disruption. You're running your software at home, your reaction to that kind of uh, evolution. Yeah, you want to take that Steve first? Yeah, sure. I mean, it, it, it's like you said, the, the way that code has gone to be delivered and executed is, is it explodes and disappears. And if, if there is no way to track that and trace that and understand it, um, you know, the, 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 the generation we're in of code that's ephemeral, uh, what's it going to be next and where's it going to go? And, uh, will it ever live anywhere that's alive? Uh, you know, the, the, the technologies are really being pushed and that's the exciting part. And that's why 
from an app dynamics perspective, we're investing, yeah. we're investing in open telemetry, is distributed tracing. So as you got distributed computing, we do distributed tracing and we really look at the problem and provide solutions for our customers. Awesome, Ron, you're taught, I mean, observability, you know, if you can't observe it, you can't measure it, you don't understand it, opens up a lot of things. You got to yeah. have the observation space and that's everything, it's hard. Yeah, yeah and, and especially as we transition from, you know, visual, you know, physical servers to virtual hosts, to virtual processes, to virtual functions, right? At, at some point it's the, I don't even know how to measure capacity for a function in the cloud, right? It, let alone try to understand, well, what's the cost going to be, you know, before I actually, you know, deploy it and measure what it's going to cost, right? So, so these are some of the areas where I think a lot of companies are struggling in understanding how do I move something I'm traditionally very comfortable with is I know how much a host costs and I can put my software on there and I can run the CPU at hundred percent and then I know yeah. what I'm getting. Um, but as you start moving into, you know, uh, virtual processes and virtual functions, it makes it so much more difficult to think about how you do that capacity planning and budgeting exercise in advance. Um, you know, one of the things that we do with observability is we can test it and we can measure it. And then based on that measure, we can make predictions about, okay, this is what it looks like in dev. Let's extrapolate what that looks like in production just by scaling the load. Uh, and, and in areas where you've taken IO and network out of the equation, that, that kind of extrapolation works very well. That's awesome. Congratulations and a great, Great uh, use case, uh, Ron, thanks for sharing your story. Steven, thanks for uh, coming along and highlighting this great use case and congratulations on having a killer product with observability with AppDynamics. We've been following your work at, uh, as a company and now at Cisco. So uh, yeah, it's killer. Uh, software, thanks. modern software is upon us. Again, the next level's here. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Appreciate the insight. It's been a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you for the opportunity. Okay, this is theCUBE's virtual coverage. We are the Cube, Cube virtual. This is what we do now. We're not in person, but we're remote. When we get back to real life, we'll be back on the scene, but still doing the interviews. Thanks for watching reInvent coverage 2020 virtual.